and welcome once again to EWTN's Bookmark. I'm Doug Keck, your host. Our guests are Marie Oates, one of the editors, along with Jane Record, one of the contributors to the book Women of Opus Dei, In Their Own Words, published by Crossroad Publishing. Welcome, Marie, to EWTN. Thank you, Doug. And you as well. Thank Great you. to have you here. And we're talking about a book called Women of Opus Dei, In Their Own Words. Well, let's talk first about the whole idea of Opus Dei. People hear Opus Dei, they know it has something to do with the church. At different times they've heard it in the secular press because of different more secular books that talked about it. Uh, what is Opus Dei? Opus Dei is an institution of the Catholic Church. It, it, it seeks to serve the church as the church wants to be served, but its, its special mission is to help laity find God in their ordinary in their ordinary life, in their work. Mm -hmm. Now, you were one of the editors of the book, right? Yes. So how long did it take for this book to be put together? Um, probably about a year, maybe a little bit over a year. And were you one of the people who came up with the idea of doing this book? Yes. Okay. I did. Okay. Now, let me ask you, uh, Jane, about mm -hmm. this. A lot of times, my good friend, Father C. John McCloskey, mm -hmm. from Opus Dei Priest, yes. Uh, always made the point to us whenever we talk about, I talk about marriage encounter, which I was involved in, or Curcio and things like that, and he'd say, and I'd say, well, those are lay ecclesial movements like Opus Dei, and he's saying, no, 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 Opus Dei is a personal prelature. What is a personal prelature? Well, the, the prelature means that it's, it's organized around a prelate. Our prelate is Bishop Echeverria, and we, it, it's very similar to how, um, um, the church is organized with m with the military that we aren't organized around a geographical area we're organized around our person our prelate and um, that is how the the organization is set up mm -hmm. so uh, that's a good example I hadn't thought of it that way Marie the idea of kind of like the military archdiocese yeah. is yeah. okay right. mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of it and, and even the it, it has to do prelate. more with okay. persons mm -hmm. than which is what you're right. saying than geographical right. so it's yeah it's organized to serve persons, a group of persons. Now, uh, Opus Dei, people know about it. Here's a book that's specifically about the women of Opus Dei, and it seems to be in reading the book that there was a deliberate attempt to hear the voices, as you say in the title, in their own words in a sense, the voices of the women of Opus Dei. Why was it important to emphasize the women of Opus Dei? I, I think it was important uh, within the context of what was going on when we conceived the idea of the book, the, the movie, The Da Vinci Code, was okay. released in the book, and of course that was uh, uh, an incredible distortion of, of Jesus Christ, of the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. and of Opus Dei. And, and I, I thought, well, in, with respect to Opus Dei, I found it particularly um, upsetting that even as the author distorted what Opus Dei is, he didn't even include women to distort them. I mean, they only show <laughs> up in like one scene. Right. So I'm like, where are we? Where, you know, where are the women? I mean, that's not the only reason, but I, I just thought, gosh, women have no voice. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it would be good to help people understand that women are, you know, 50%, if not more, right. than the total membership well, of Opus Dei. Well, that's what I read in the book, mm -hmm. Jane, that it said mm -hmm. that internationally it's 50 percent. Is that about the same percentage or a little more than that in the United States? Is that similar or less? I think it's similar. It's okay. very similar, yeah. So do you mm -hmm. find that people are surprised when they find I have to admit, I think I was a little surprised to realize that, that uh, it would be 50-50 like that. Oh, I don't think that there's any reason to, because the message of Opus Dei is equally accessible to mm -hmm. men or women. It's The message of Opus Dei is that Opus Dei gives practical help to the lay people, mm -hmm. men and women, to help them to find God and love God in their lives, mm -hmm. in, in their work, uh, in their relationships with their family and their friends. And that's something th that's equally accessible to men and women. Now that ties so, into the name, Opus Dei, yeah, right? the work of God. The work Absolutely. of God. Now let me ask you, you're a convert, yes, right? Yes, So uh, when you came into the church, was it because of dealing with other people you knew who were involved with Opus Dei, or did you come into the church and then find Opus Dei? Um, it, I came into the church because I met my husband, and he was a member of Opus Dei, and I, I, could, I didn't really know what that meant, but I knew that he was a really very Catholic guy, and I didn't want to be shut out of that part of his life, and so I, st I started exploring the, the faith on, on that, uh, with that beginning, and um, everything I learned about 
the Catholic faith, mm -hmm. I learned through Opus Dei, through priests of, of the work. And once I became a Catholic, mm -hmm. I really, I, I found a lot of fulfillment in what I had learned, and I continued learning and went on, and I became a member of Opus Dei. Okay. Now, Marie, in, in, in the stories that, are, that populate this book, how did you go about assembling the ones that are included? Some of them are kind of like uh, essays. Some of them are actually like virtually interviews. Um, did you pre-select who you were going to include? Did you have an open call to various members, women in Opus Dei, to say submit articles or ideas? How did it, how did you go about getting this book? I worked with some of the the leadership, the women who serve in the leadership capacity for Opus Dei in the United States, and I spoke with them. I suggested people. They suggested people, and we wanted to come up with what we considered sort of a a. a a genuine cross sampling of, you know, what, who, uh, you know, there's no typical mm -hmm. woman of Opus Dei, there's no typical man of Opus yeah. Dei, but we wanted to give diversity, basically. And so people were suggested, I would contact them, ask them, are you, you know, are you willing to do this? Certainly it's, I think it's very generous of people like Jane and the other women who are in the book, they really open yeah. themselves up and they share often intimate details right. of their life and how they love God and how they find God, how they struggle with their defects, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that was sort of the process. Mm -hmm. Now in the foreword uh, written by uh, Susan Mengels, I hope mm -hmm. I said her name, president of Lexington College in Chicago, she notes that the women in this book appear content with and well-versed in their faith. I'd even say they come across as in love and passionate about it. Given some of the difficulties the Catholic Church has faced in recent years, some may find this fidelity and excitement about one's faith striking, perhaps even oxymoronic. Hmm. I mean, how do you find that, Marie, in the sense of you're living your faith and all of stuff that's going on that we read in the headlines of the church, not about Opus Dei, about hmm. other things happening in the church, the sex abuse scandal, et cetera. How does that impact people who know maybe your commitment to Opus Dei in the church? Well, I, I, I'm from Massachusetts, uh, so of course, when the scandal broke out in Massachusetts back in 2000, 2001, 2002, I remember being at first quite uncomfortable. And of course, it's 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 disappointing that offenses like this have occurred. Um, and but I soon found when I went out with my friends, and they knew I was a devout Catholic, that they were talking to me more than ever before about the Catholic Church and they too were disturbed often they weren't practicing or they mm -hmm. were far from the church and this was now an opportunity for them to talk so at first I thought this is unsettling and and then I realized no this is a huge opportunity mm -hmm. um, to talk about what the church really is that it's a gift from God and that um, there, it's always been staffed by sinners I'm a sinner mm -hmm. the Pope's a sinner we're all and we have to work at holiness. We have to work and struggle to be holy. And certainly that's the message of Catholicism and that's what Opus Dei exists to further that, that message. Mm -hmm. Now Jane, mm -hmm. in your experience in, in dealing with Opus Dei uh, and, and meeting your husband and, and, and that, when you became involved, yes. was there anything that surprised you about uh, the spirituality of Opus Dei? Um, I, I really, really valued the freedom. Saint Jose Maria really emphasized freedom, and that we. And I used the saint who yeah, founded Opus Dei. Right? Yeah, and and that was something that really appealed to me, and I felt helped Opus Dei to fit into my life because I had freedom in deciding how it was going to fit and how I could use it to help me. Now, somebody might say yeah. they'd be surprised you'd say freedom because okay. they would think, oh, Opus Dei, you know, it's an, an organization and they're they're telling people how to live their lives and in fact Opus Dei has like a women's group and a men's group and it's kind of separated mm -hmm. and, and from the outside it looks like it might be rigid. But you're saying it's freeing. Oh, it's so freeing. Um, it's so freeing. One of the things, okay, so Opus Dei, I, I value Opus Dei because it's very practical. My background is in engineering and I think in terms of practical things. I want to have practical help on how to live my faith and Opus Dei has really given me that. And one of the very practical things that Opus Dei gives us is um, teaches you the value of having a plan for living your life, a plan for for um, spending time with God, a plan for for uh, going to mass and to do some, spend some time in mental prayer and reading. And what Saint Jose Maria would say is that that plan needs to fit us like a glove. Mm -hmm. 
And the glove, everybody's glove is different. And, and some, days, some days of the week, the glove may be different. Some days the thumb is on your thumb, some days the thumb is over here, but you, you adjust the glove to fit Someday your Someday you're all thumbs. Yes, but, yes, uh, right. it's true. <laughs> but, but you adjust the glove to fit your life. So there's <coughs> infinite freedom in that, in, in taking one spirit and adjusting it to fit my life. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in reading through what Barbara Kay, columnist for the National Post, who mm -hmm. uh, writes in the preface here, made some interesting uh, points about Opus Dei, uh, where he kind of talking about it being organic. Hmm. What does she mean organic? Sounds like Whole Foods. Right, yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, it's very popular organic. In what way organic? Well, I'm not quite sure. Barbara, of course, is an agnostic right. Jew, so I'm not quite sure what she means by organic. I think in, in, in Opus Dei, when we think of organic, we think of being grafted to the vine of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, you know, mm -hmm. through the sacraments, through, um, you know, yeah, in the church right. and being a part of the church. Yeah, it seems that she was kind of, in, from what I was reading here, Opus Dei is... Uh, purpose in microcosm is the bedrock of an authentic Jewish life as well, meaning the, the whole idea that it's all-encompassing, kind of what you were just saying a minute, oh, minute ago, Jane, yeah. that idea that it's not compartmentalization, right? right? And that's mm -hmm. St. Jose mm -hmm. Maria yes. Escriva mm -hmm. as well, which is it's sometimes as Catholics, unfortunately, I think, we could t tend to s treat it like, well, we go to Mass on Sunday, and that's what we do on Sunday, and then we go back to our regular right. life right. during the week, but that's not the message of mm -hmm. Opus Dei, and I guess that's kind of how she's relating to right. it, right? So perhaps what she's talking about is this uh, idea of unity of life, which St. Jose Maria mm -hmm. talked about a lot and encouraged people in Opus Dei and people mm -hmm. who come to activities of Opus Dei to, to strive to live where they don't live a double life, that they're not just, right. you know, Catholics when they go to Mass on Sunday, but that they're Catholics 24-7, that mm -hmm. they're trying to always have Jesus Christ front and center in everything that they do in their work, in their relationships, mm -hmm. and certainly Opus Dei strives to help people right. to, to live that way of life. Right, really an integrated mm -hmm. life. And she, I, she must have some, in her experiences, maybe that she's experienced that. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Now also, this, this ties back to what you were saying there, Jane, a few mm -hmm. minutes ago. What Opus Dei knows is that internal liberty and external structure within those boundaries free will can be most effectively galvanized, work together to promote the optimal environment for healthy self-realization. So again, that kind of what seems counterintuitive or as if it runs against itself, the idea of internal liberty and external structure. Exactly, exactly. And, and again, the freedom is really the freedom to custom build your own spiritual life, custom build your path to God. Mm -hmm. And in that way, that is accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. Now it says here in the introduction that mm -hmm. Opus Dei is dedicated to helping lay men and women throughout the world find and love God through their daily work and social interactions and to spread the Christian message in and through their, their daily lives. Let me, let me ask you, uh, Marie, in the sense of Opus Dei, it's really uh, a lay movement in the sense of that it's mostly lay people, though it's not a movement technically, and also, uh, but Sometimes when people, I mean, I knew Father McCloskey, he's a priest, <coughs> but I was surprised to find out that they're really Opus Dei priests per se. There aren't a lot of them, right? Right. I mean, it's vast majority of people are lay men and lay women, right? That's correct. The, the, I think the, there's about 88 to 89,000 members of Opus Dei worldwide. Two percent are priests. Um, and the, the, of course, that's the whole idea of Opus Dei. It is... <coughs> to help the laity find mm. and love Jesus Christ throughout their days. So the priests, we cherish our priests in Opus Dei, and we're so grateful mm. the priesthood is a gift from Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's all about the laity. And right. the priests, of course, exist to serve um, in this right. way, to help the laity remember, you know, to, to love God in their ordinary things. And am I correct in understanding that usually the priests are called from members who are already in Opus Dei in a yeah, sense? Yeah, they're, they're, they're laymen who usually have been working themselves and, um, and are asked to be mm -hmm. priests. I mean, they, obviously they have to see that, yes, I'm called to do this. Okay, now inside the organization, there's okay. uh, obviously the priests, but there's, there's different categories of people we read about, a, a numerary, a supernumerary, I guess, and a, 
associate or cooperative. Could you maybe run through each of those so we understand what exactly they mean? Certainly. There's there's really just one vocation in Opus Day. It's the same vocation for everyone. Okay. The differences are really about how available they are to help with the apostolates and, you know, just to be available to serve. So the the numerary the, the numerary person, if it's a man or a woman, mm -hmm. is called to celibacy. They realize, gosh, I'm called to be totally available to mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And so I'm 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 not gonna get married. I'm going this is I'm going to give myself completely to God. And the whole idea of that is I'm more mm -hmm. available to serve the needs of Opus Day mm -hmm. um, as a celibate person. The associate member is very similar. That person is also called to celibacy. Um, the difference would be that that individual usually does not live in the center of Opus Dei. Mm -hmm. The numeraries typically, not always, but mm -hmm. usually will live in a center of Opus Dei, and they um, they enjoy family life. Mm -hmm. um, there's you know there's other mm -hmm. numeraries that they live with. Um, so the associate member often does not live in the center. Okay. Um, the person may live with their family or for professional reasons, they're, you know, whatever. The supernumerary, um, the supernumerary member is often married, doesn't mm -hmm. have to be married, but usually will get married. And that individual, of course, doesn't live in a center, but right. lives with his or her right. spouse okay. or alone if the person is not married. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, usually not as available, but they're available mm -hmm. um, to help with the apostolates of Opus Dei. And the cooperator is a person who is not in Opus Dei per se, um, but does is associated with Opus mm -hmm. Dei, has a close relationship with Opus Dei, um, prays for Opus Dei, Opus Dei prays for that person. I would say a cooperator feels very much a part of the family of Opus Dei and should. Right. Um, but hasn't doesn't either received a vocation, won't receive a vocation, um, or you know I don't know. Right. That's right. that's sort of now what struck me, and I, I know several priests who define themselves, who I know who uh, who say, oh, I'm a cooperator with Opus mm -hmm. Dei, and it says here in the introduction that a number of these persons have an association with Opus Dei and are referred to as cooperators, as mm -hmm. you were just saying, Marie. Some of whom are not Catholic, some of whom are not even Christian. Right. So mm -hmm. it, that's that's it says here that's that's unique or it's the first time that's been offered. And and that makes absolute sense because there are people who see the good that Opus Dei is trying to do. Opus Dei is trying to help lead people closer to God, trying to help mm -hmm. people find their path closer to God. Mm -hmm. And that's something again that is accessible, that is understandable by anybody. Mm -hmm. Now, Marie, in one of the early interviews here, uh, towards the beginning of the book, uh, one of the questions that's asked uh, is uh, one that struck me: Is Opus Day the same in every country? Um, the vocation to Opus Day is the same in every country. Um, the, of course, people are every vocation is unique. So, the vocation on the one hand is the same, but every person is unique. And so the way that person lives out his or her vocation is unique. And cultures, I would say, are unique. So I, I have to travel a lot. I've traveled to Spain now a number of times. Mm -hmm. I've traveled to Italy. I've traveled to Mexico. And I've stayed in centers of Opus Dei. And I feel very at home. I feel like, oh my gosh, yeah. I've come mm -hmm. home. Yeah. On the other hand, I also notice distinct cultural differences. As it, it might be in the diet, it might be in the schedule, the way they live, it might be in what they enjoy in terms of entertainment versus what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that completely answers the question. Mm -hmm. So uh, the spirit is the same, right. but how it's lived out mm -hmm. is different in each mm -hmm. culture. Well, I guess it kind of fits what you're saying, really, yeah, Jane, the absolutely. idea of, the, of, in a sense, that, and I mentioned that external structure, but mm -hmm. that internal ability to live it out differently mm -hmm. and to to adapt to our each each person's each person's own individuality each country's own individuality right. yeah. now now one of the things that struck me uh, I actually have a funny yeah. story yeah. along these lines I was in Spain uh, we study in Opus Dei theology regularly all the members study re theology mm -hmm. um, each year and we're trying to develop ourselves so that we really know our faith well mm -hmm. and um, you know, and are able to love God more and also to share the faith better with other people, people mm -hmm. we work with, our friends, our family. 
and I traveled to Spain to do this. I've never done that before, um, to spend a couple of weeks. It's called an annual course mm -hmm. um, for the numerary members. For the supernumeraries, it's called a workshop. Mm -hmm. And um, this is just, it's funny you're saying this, because I was, I was there, I was the only American, with, it was in southern Spain, um, and there was a German girl there also mm -hmm. doing her annual course. And we just could not get over that they, they didn't have like a regular schedule mm -hmm. out. So, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh -huh. I mean, we both were like, but, but wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people knew what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's not that we did have sort of a basic schedule, but I, as an American, I had to really get accustomed to the, that they were they just were much more carefree mm -hmm. and there still was structure there mm -hmm. still was a regular flow but it, boy I, it was very different, different from what I'm accustomed to anyway just to probably you know kind of a banal story but what also struck me as I mentioned before the uh, the president of Lexington College uh, wrote in the forward here and one of the things I know in reading the book there was concern of trying to make the point I think uh, the women of Opus Dei and that they're not second-class citizens Absolutely. or that they're just as important. But one of the things that does strike people is the particular college has to do with the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that gets portrayed as if, well, that's kind of like a service industry. Well, it's, it, what it is is there are so many, half of the people in this country do hospitality. Half of the people in this country are women mm -hmm. and they all run their homes. Um, and the the skills that that, that Lexington College teaches are skills that would be helpful to half of this country. What St. Jose Maria said, he, he, he had some really great ideas about women. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like back in the 30s. Mm -hmm. He said that women are, women are people. Women are 100% people. They have intellectual capacities and they should develop those to the highest level that they can. And that was a really revolutionary idea in the 30s in Spain. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, he was way ahead of his time. And part of that was the recognition that yes, many women run homes, many women are mothers. And they need to approach that work with just as much professionalization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as the university professor, as a politician. You need to have the same attitude about this is my professional work and I need to do this as best as I can mm -hmm. and offer it to God. And Lexington College takes that idea. It, it is really aimed for people who will be using um, the hospitality career as, as a career mm -hmm. where they get paid as opposed to being a housewife, housewife like me. Right, right. I do it, but I don't get paid, don't mm -hmm. get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, it's, it's work that half of this country mm -hmm. uses. It's very, very useful. I don't, I don't see any contradiction or any, anything at all in that. Lexington College is the only all-women's um, college dedicated to the hospitality services in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's unique. It's a wonderful school. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's one of the striking aspects about St. Jose Maria and perhaps the spirit of Opus Dei is this radical uh, equality of jobs mm -hmm. that um, St. Jose Maria said he would value the work of a street cleaner the way he would value the work okay. of the president of a college and it really came down to the love with which you did your mm -hmm. with which you do your work right. and how well you strive to do your work mm -hmm. so i think that that's a feature of opus day that i think is it's fascinating right. he also placed great emphasis on um he loved our lady he had enormous devotion to mary and he saw that her work as, you know, the mother, taking care of the home, raising Jesus, taking care of St. Joseph, um, that that is, is sort of an exalted mm -hmm. profession. And so he never said, so women should stay home and, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. take care of the family. Mm -hmm. But he had a different perspective of like, this is an extraordinary mm -hmm. work. Right. This is mm -hmm. this is the domestic church. I mean, this is where souls are formed. This this is where the rubber meets the road, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he places a lot of emphasis on that. And um, one of the things I found when I was researching for the book is um, the the women. Those women are often invisible, mm -hmm. even in our you know in our society today with feminism. They still are a forgotten group. Um, they still, the stay-at-home moms or women who stay at home and have a job outside mm -hmm, the home, mm -hmm. they still are on the margins and are not celebrated. In Opus Dei, they're celebrated. They're cherished, they're celebrated, and they're encouraged in that work. And I think Lexington College is 
just another reflection of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Just before we go, uh, let me just ask you, Marie, what, what would you say to somebody out there who might be thinking about what they want to do with their life and whether Opus Day might be the right avenue for them? Get the book. <laughs> <laughs> Get the book. <laughs> and that has been actually our experience, that Has people been? have been ha have been reading the book and they've been thinking, gosh, I may have I may have a vocation opus day. Mm -hmm. Not and men too. Yes. I'm finding yeah. a lot yeah. of men Absolutely. have been getting the book. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm very happy about that. Mm -hmm. I hope it helps my my greatest desire is that it helps people come closer to God. If it does that in any capacity, then it's a success. A success. Well, Jane, maybe your husband can work on the Men of Opus Day book. There you, you go. never know. That would be great. That's a great idea. Well, thank idea. you so much for thank joining you, us, Jane. Thank, thank you, Marie. So much, Good though. luck. Thanks. Good luck with the book. Marie Oates, editor, along with Jane Record, contributor of Women of Opus Day, in their own words, published by Crossroad Publishing, available through the EWTN Religious Catalog. You want to know? Read this book. Join us next time right here on EWTN's Book Mark. Thank you.